I can definitely say my interview today has been over two years in the making. So I'm very excited to finally have on uh, Mike Maloney. He's back with a brand new book called The Great Gold and Silver Rush of the 21st Century. Mike, <laughs> it's been a long time coming for this to finally happen. Welcome to my show. <laughs> well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, while I was writing the book, I've, I've been turning down all interviews for about the yeah. past three years. So that's the reason we, we haven't done this yet, is I, I couldn't do both those things and get this book done. I yeah. should say, yeah, I definitely wasn't taking it personally. Uh, I knew you were <laughs> writing, writing this book, and I told them I need to have you know, the first interview when it, when it comes out. Um, and we're going to talk about various topics your book covers because I read it, I crammed it all in with great interest and I actually want to go back and reread it when I have more time. But you wrote your first book in 2008, correct? It came out in 2008. I started researching for that book in about 2002 and I think I came up with the table of contents for it in 2003. Uh, it was written in 2005, uh, 6 and 7 and then uh, the writing and editing, and then came out in 2008. People do not realize how much work a book is. It is well, you a put, lot you, this is a labor of love. I mean, how many years have you been working on this book? I actually started it a decade ago. And wow. uh, I worked yeah. on it off and on, then became very serious and started working on it much more intensely in 2018 and 19. Uh, in 2020, when the COVID crash happened, uh, the pandemic plunge, I thought it was all over with, that that was the popping of the bubble, that I had missed it and that I had wasted a couple of years of my life. And so I, I didn't write uh, the rest, you know, once that crash happened for the rest of 2020, I didn't write it. So I picked it back up 2021 and 2022. Uh, I worked very intensely on it, trying to get it out before a potential crash, the, the market correcting from the warping and distorting of the economy that the Federal Reserve has done. Uh, then we ran into the problem of supply chain issues. The printer couldn't get paper, and then the printer couldn't get cardboard to put the, you know, if he did print the books, he wouldn't be able to have boxes to put them in. <laughs> and so right? I was trying right. to rush the printer, and then the printer says, okay, we've got it, send me your files. And uh, I was rushing to uh, try and get this done and when we transferred the files uh, from Word documents into the typesetting, uh, it turned out that the book was uh, was big and I uh, slashed probably, <clears throat> this is probably about 20% of what was written. So for every page that exists here, there were five, four or five other pages that, that also existed in the original drafts. Well, there's a lot of great and a ton of research, and you could tell that went into this book. So I'm gonna try and hit on as many points as I can. We obviously wanna talk inflation, doppelganger dollars, as you call it, an economy on life support, and of course, uh, gold supply. So uh, one to actually start with that, since you know a topic we track here closely is central bank buying of gold. Uh, we, we're seeing record amounts of it happening um, China's gold imports in 2022 hitting the highest level um, since since 2018. So we know central banks are hungry for gold. But on top of this, you 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 add to it. Where have all the miners gone? And I just want to read uh, something from you your book here. You say the Bureau of Labor Statistics predicts that by 2024. A third of mining and geological engineers will likely retire. Imagine if the tech industry lost one third of, it, third of its programmers or a third of the oil industry's engineers called to quit. Both sectors would be devastated. This is precisely what is happening to the mining sector. So global scope here, Mike, talk to us about what you're seeing in terms of, 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 of gold supply. Okay, I have to be honest here. Uh, some of the, Jeff Clark from thegoldadvisor.com uh, is one of my advisors and a close friend. And uh, he really helped me out with that particular section. When it was on mining and the supply, uh, a lot of that came from Jeff. But it is interesting, this convergence of all of these factors that uh, the, the 
geologists and the, the, the mining geologists, all of the people that work in mines, hard rock mining is not being taught anymore. These guys are old, they want to retire, and there's very few schools, and uh, I, I can't remember what it is, but the, the percentage of, uh, of degrees in uh, engineering degrees, the mining sector makes up this tiny, tiny uh, fraction of it. Uh, yeah, everybody wants to go into tech. Everybody wants to go into, you know, something charming. They don't, you know, I think it was Jeff that wrote, dirt, forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jeff's a good, good friend of the show as well. Um, but I think, I think the bigger, you know, the message of the book is like you compare that the gold rush is of the past to those of the 21st century. And you yes. say versus 1980 today, we also have 18 times more people around the world that can buy precious metals, 50 times more currency, 56 times more billionaires, 200 times more billionaires, uh, you know, and you go on and on. So obviously yeah. making the case that, you know, the appetite, but, but is the conviction there? Are, are people turning to gold, do you feel? Is the knowledge oh, there? Well, there's, there's twice as much gold available above ground, but it really doesn't matter if there's enough people turning toward it yet because there's basically 25 times, the population is larger, the people that can access gold uh, is, you know, you could not buy gold in the USSR or Mao's China during the last great gold rush of, of the, the, the bull market of the 70s, which by the way, uh, with the exception of cryptocurrencies, was the largest bull market there had ever been. This, the people don't realize how big the 70s bull market in precious metals was. By the way, when I say that gold went up uh, 25 times and, and silver went up 41 times, I'm taking the intraday highs and lows, so that is the maximum potential gains. But still, that is absolutely enormous, and until cryptocurrencies came along, that was the greatest bull market of all time. Now, cryptocurrencies, uh, some of them will do well, maybe all of them in what's coming, but there has just been a lot of suspicion cast on them with the FTX scandal and other things that have happened in that sector. Uh, I do own some cryptocurrencies, but uh, the vast majority of the, the largest portion of uh, my net worth that's in a single area is physical gold and silver. Um, the, you know, if, if they went up 25 times for gold and 41 times for silver back in the 70s, and then you look at the amount of uh, gold per person, the amount of gold that's available up ground is above ground is about twice as many ounces as back then. Except when you add up, you know, you couldn't, there were no exchanges in Africa. South America was very poor. I remember when I was a kid, all of these commercials on TV trying to raise uh, cash for these starving children. And so they would show starving children in Mexico, uh, in you know places that are now not starving, where there are investors. There weren't any investors then. They were worried about what to get to eat tomorrow, not what to invest in. And uh, so there's 18 times more people around the world that can access precious metals with 55 times more currency, according to the OECD. Uh, and so, you know, <clears throat> I had a, a crew of a researcher that would uh, help me find all of the websites to get the data from, and then a, a, a chart maker, spreadsheet master, and then a uh, writer, editor, uh, proofreader and so it's a it was a crew of four people working on this I have more than 3,000 hours of my time invested in this book uh, so it's and if you look at the back if you look at the end notes this is very well researched and documented everything is referenced and most of it comes from the Federal Reserve and the Bank of England uh, but there is something big coming and uh, you know people like Warren Buffett for instance <laughs> he's not going to turn to Bitcoin. <laughs> Even though he said gold is a pet rock, uh, when, when, when the people that have the most capital, the people that uh, um, are in their uh, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, when they turn to a safe haven, it's probably not going to be cryptocurrencies.